Hello everyone again. Um, I'm going to come for you again tonight. The Lord has laid another message on my heart. But before I do, I'm going to start out in a prayer tonight. And, uh, we'll just see where it goes. and I hope you know somebody gets something out of it. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you once again, Lord. And we just thank you for all that you're doing, all that you're going to do, Lord. Lord, I ask that you go with us during this live video, Lord, and let it touch somebody. Let your Holy Spirit fall, Lord. Lord, I ask that you just be with us through the remainder of this week as we go to and from where we need to go, Lord. Lord, we give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so tonight the Lord has laid two scriptures on my heart. The first is Matthew 24, verse 8 through 10. It says, All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then they shall be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And the Lord laid it on my heart just now to go back up and read verse 4 through 7, and on down to 10. And it says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See thee ye not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines, and pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. And all these things are the beginning of sorrows. Now I'm going to turn over to Matthew 20, we can get over to it, 28 verse 20. It says, teaching them to observe all things, whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now, the Lord gave me that scripture tonight to read, and I, I just got to thinking, there may be some people that feel like their world is ending tonight. And I don't, I don't know where you may be. You say you may, your husband may have left you, your wife may have left you, or you may be facing the death of a loved one. Or you may be facing the word cancer right now. Or whatever your situation may be. And your world may feel like it's ending tonight. Now, I don't know the situation where you may be or where you may be at right now. But I just know that if you have the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior tonight, He will not leave you. Even if your world feels like it's ending tonight. And I don't know there's a lot of stuff going on right now in this world. And it could feel like the end of the world to some, but it shouldn't matter if you've got Jesus Christ in your heart. Because he said, I will be with you, even unto the end of the world. Now, listen to me tonight, church. Things may seem bad, but we've got a home in heaven waiting for us. Now, I don't know where your heart may stand tonight, but I urge that you get ready. For time is getting near. As I said last night, you've got to prepare your heart to meet the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior tonight. Now, I... I urge you, I don't know what your situation may be. You may not even believe in God tonight. I don't know who this is going to reach. I don't know who it's going to touch tonight. But the Lord wants you to know that he will be with you all the way up into the end of the world. And that don't just mean the literal end of the world, church. It means whatever situation that you may face, you may be at the end of your rope. You may not be holding on any longer. But I tell you what, if you have Jesus Christ and you're at the end of that rope, and as soon as you let go, he's right at the end of that rope with you, ready to catch you. Tonight, I'm telling you what, tonight is the night of salvation. It says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We've got to do that. Time is running out. We, we've seen all these things that have been taking place. Where it says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Now, if we open our eyes and really think about it tonight, all these things are taking place. Even in our little hometown here in the last, I don't know when it was. I guess it's been about four or five months ago. We had an earthquake that we could feel. And they're happening all over the world right now. And it says they shall be wars and rumors of wars. And what are we talking about right now? This country may be facing a civil war. I, people's talking about it left and right, church. And it may just be rumors, but these are signs of the Christ's coming. It's a sign of the end times. And I urge you, if you have Jesus in your heart, he's not going to leave you during these times. 
He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and his word will stand when the world is on fire, church. It is time that we take up this book and we time that we bow our heads and accept that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Because if you don't, you will be left when the time comes, when that rapture happens, when the trumpet is sounded. You will not get a second chance. I guarantee you, if you are sitting in a field or wherever you're at, and Jesus comes and your heart ain't right, you ain't going. You can just say whatever you want to say. I've lived a good life. I'm a good person. Well, good deeds don't get you into heaven. I was one of the worst people that there was before I got saved. And I knew I was going to heaven. But there's some people out there that's so brainwashed by today's standards that they say I can live a good life and, you know, be fine. I can get into heaven or whatever the case may be. No, you can't. It takes being born again. It says, lest a man be born again, he shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I think about that tonight. Are you where you need to be? Do you have Jesus up until the end of the world? To the end of your world? You may be facing some di difficult things right now, but I promise you, Jesus is with you. Now, we were talking about giants the other day. Some giants can make you feel like you have reached the end of your world. You know, they, there's some big giants out there. There's fear, there's anxiety, there's depression. Lord knows there's a number of other things. But our whole nation is being covered up by a giant right now. But you've got to remember that the God behind you is bigger than the giant that's in front of you. You've got to take up your five smooth stones and you've got to slay your giants because God will be with you every step of the way, even up until the end of the world, church. And I'm telling you tonight, it is time to get right and time to get back to God. Our nation has got so far out of whack that us Christians don't even know where to begin. I'm telling you, it starts with us. We can't just sit back and say, oh, Lord, Trump will handle it or Joe Biden will handle it. No. We can't do that. We've got to take a stand for our God. He said he will never leave us nor forsake us. And it's time for us to take a stand. Now you may be somewhere tonight that, you know, you've got really bad news. If you had a really bad day, you know, it may seem like your whole world's falling apart. Now, I don't know why the Lord laid this on my heart, but it is Veterans Day today. And I'd like to thank everyone that has served. But I know there's plenty of men and women out there that haven't served, that is taken on by depression, and plenty of ones that have. Now, I want you to think about it tonight. You may be sitting there debating on ending your life. It literally could be the end of your world. But I just want you to know that Jesus is sitting right there next to you. And he don't want you to give up. He wants you to hold on. He wants you to turn around and say, God, I give it to you. Because that's what we have to do, church. We can't just let the enemy win. Because if we let him win, then what did Jesus die for? He died for me and you to be victorious, to see the kingdom of heaven. I promise you the kingdom of heaven is going to be beautiful and it's going to be coming one day. And it's going to be coming one day very soon. We've got to you know, keep pushing that course. Wherever you laid that cross down, way back yonder down the road, you need to go back and get it and start driving the course again we can't just sit here and mope around and feel sorry for ourselves anymore it is time that we get back to the true word of god church all this stuff people twisting and turning god's word saying i'm going to ruffle some feathers here tonight but once saved always saved that's a lie straight from the pits of hell and i can promise you that it says it can find you in a backslidden state and i promise you if you go back and pick up your cross and carry it with him again he will be with you to the end of the world. Now, I don't know where you're at or what you're going through, but the Lord wants you to hear this tonight. Now, I don't know how many people is going to receive this, but I know what the Lord has told me to do, and that's what I'm going to do. Now, I just want to reiterate something here. If I can get back to it. When we were talking about the signs of the end of the ages, it says, Then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Think about what is going on around us today. People's hating each other. People's betraying each other. Time is drawing near. And if you don't have Jesus, it could be the little end of the, the world, church. We don't know. But I can read the signs and the times that we're living in. 
And today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. Not the next day. Today. Each new morning brings mercy. It says God's mercy is new every morning. And I suggest that you find Jesus in your life so he can be with you up until the end of the world. And that's the message the Lord has laid on my heart tonight. And I hope it's helped somebody. And if there's anything I can do, if, I, if there's anybody I can pray for, you just like or comment or even shoot me a personal message and I will pray for you. Because that's all we have right now is each other. And I just pray that you take heed to the word of God. And I thank you for all that you've done.